Hello everybody and welcome back. This video is a follow-up of my last video on the two always and low-cost mini spot welders. In particular this one is uh, dedicated to the pink PCB which is here in the picture. Uh, I did some uh, testing and yes uh, I suggest you to mod this one also uh, to avoid the usual under voltage gate problem and uh, risk of uh, exploding FETs. So as you can see I wrote down the um, rise and fall times of both the um, pink and the mini rev zero, the red one, the latest new rev zero, which I call new rev zero. This is a modded new rev zero, right? And already uh, modded, uh, even with the modifications, the um, rise time of the gate is 100 microseconds to the full voltage, while this pink one is 26 microseconds. So it's, uh, and to the Miller plateau, it's 5 microseconds. So it's still uh, uh, four times faster than the mini rev zero, the new rev zero one. So um, I must say that this is uh, can be determined uh, determining in the um, life of FETs, especially at extreme uh, currents pulses. But also the full time of the old or let's say the new uh, rev zero. But uh, prior to this pink model, this is it's still 3.5 milliseconds, which is a lot. Well, here we are around 650 microseconds, and I can show you that with the shots later. So, um, this, this, these rise and fall times are uh, unmodded, and uh, they don't change with the mod. They mm, can be slightly faster, a few microseconds faster with the mod, I will explain why. Uh, but the most important thing, uh, as you can see here, is um, the mod in the lower left corner. You can see there I've added a cap, a diode, and a resistor, which I put into heat shrink. And uh, I will show you now the two. Um, here is the unmodded uh, trace scope shot uh, of the pink version. And as you can see with a fully charged LiPo, which is around 12.2, you can see that this is the gate uh, voltage. It rises and then reaches maximum 6.67, uh, but then drops under uh, 6 volts during the one millisecond um, pulse which is still above that's it's it's a well above let's say the gate saturation but not really if you consider uh, any problems with the uh, power source uh, if it just drops slightly uh, during this pulse uh, that can destroy your fat so it should be well above um, six volts to be in the safe zone and um, I will recover the uh, other one. Here it is. Here is the modded version, and as you can see, the pulse goes fully to the charge voltage, which is 12.3. And uh, this was a, a six millisecond burst, and it really welds. There is a major difference in weld. Uh, you can really see it with uh, already uh, less than five milliseconds. You can get a, a, a weld. Of course, it's not a full weld, but yeah starting from one you can get a full weld uh, to around eight milliseconds at least with my 3s lipo pack so yes as you can see this mod is definitely uh, an improvement and you should if you have this model do it it's a cheap mod and uh, doesn't require a lot of uh, tinkering i will show you now how um, this is a close-up of the mod this is a four, 450 microfarad cap with a 10 ohm resistor and a diode in series. Uh, here I use the 1N4148, uh, but you can use any diode you have, a 14000, 1, 2, or 3, or 4, because the voltages are low. So whatever you have handy, any one of those diodes will, will do with a 10 or 20 ohm resistor. It's fine, even 30, don't worry. Just don't go under 10 ohms, as uh, peak uh, the peak current may be uh, too much for the diode. Um, so to start the mod, here, as you can see, this is the unmodified board. The, they take the positive from the positive rail. Okay, this is uh, the positive rail here. There's no break in here. It just is a straight, straight through. 
and uh, they just feed it through the uh, optocoupler here, the uh, junction, and it goes through this um, limiting resistor or cu uh, impedance coupling resistor um, to I can zoom in here. There, it's a uh, <clears throat> usually it's around 20 ohms, um, and it reaches the gate, and then you have a pull down resistor which is a 2.2k. Now, the problem is, is that this voltage drops because, of course, you're welding. And so how do we uh, resolve that? You interrupt here the, um, uh, the positive, and like I show here, you just with an, uh, a knife, an exacto knife, just cut this trace, so there is no more continuity here. You will have to scrape clean the um, solder mask on top of this, con this, this track here and uh, solder, uh, put some solder in so you can make a contact. Then you need to scrape also around this area uh, the solder mask on this pad. This pad is a negative pad. Uh, so you just need to scrape it to uh, you know, free the copper and also solder that. And here you will solder the uh, 450 microfarad uh, 16 volt or 25 volt, whichever you have, cap across positive here, negative to the negative. So that takes care of the first part. Of course, you need to charge that cap. So to do that, let me show you a small uh, sketch here. This is the optocoupler going to the gates. Okay, this is just one. And uh, what you have to do is um, solder the negative side to the negative part of the battery because this part, of course, is not, uh, it's not conducting yet. But that pad is already connected there, so that's all you have to do. And the positive side, after you interrupt the trace here, just solder it uh, to the uh, trace. Then you need to insert from the positive side a diode and uh, in series with the resistor, as we said. And you just prepare these very easily by hand. Let's see if I can find a, um, a picture. Okay, here is the uh, cap soldered on uh, to the uh, input of the uh, junction here of the optocoupler and the negative side. So this is the positive side of the cap and that's the negative side. It's pretty easy. And this is the top. Here is the top. Here I scraped away some um, trace, you know, on this uh, negative pad uh, and soldered on the leg and then just clip it off. So it's not, not a big deal. And then this is what you need to do uh, with the uh, diode and resistor. You need to um, put these two legs together, solder them, and um, just take care of the polarity. It doesn't matter if the resistor is before or after, just, just take care of the polarity. The positive side goes towards uh, the cap. So that's the direction you know, of the car. So the positive goes like this, through the diode, through the resistor, to the cap. It can be also the other way around. It can be positive through the resistor, through the diode, and then to the cap. It just doesn't matter. You just have to um, take care of putting it that way around. So you solder that on. You put the uh, you solder one leg, the positive side output here, and then and the other side uh, where you get the positive trace uh, over here. Of course, you scrape away some um, mass solder mask here to solder on the you know the the other side of the leg, and then you put some. Uh, heat shrink tube on it just to you know tidy everything up and that's basically it and yeah here it looks like there's a bigger shot um, after you've done that that's that's pretty much all you need uh, I will try to show you yeah this is the uh, full time uh, of the, um, uh, the full time after the shot so it's uh, if you count it's about 100 200 300 400 500 600 650, 700, depending on uh, depending on the time. Here, yeah, maybe I'll zoom in a bit. This is 50 microseconds. It's a bit zoomed in. And here you have a cleaner shot. Again, 100 microseconds. So count 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and 600. Once you reach uh, the 600, 650, you're already under one volt. So the gate is uh, off. So you can consider the gate off around here. It's uh, under the uh, Miller Miller effect. This is the this is a trigger. Here you can see the classic Miller Miller plateau here. This is when 
the uh, MOS starts turning on, the gate effect, the field effect starts rushing in, there's a capacitance which is opposing the turn on of the FETs which are all together so this effect here is amplified and uh, that uh, takes around it less than 5 microseconds to turn on as you can see but it's not still fully on it starts conducting well above the Miller plateau and the higher the voltage the less the re internal resistance of the FET and the less heat it will absorb so the important thing is to reach around this area here which is uh, uh, around 6 volts uh, as quick as possible and yeah if you check here it's 5 microseconds so in less than 8 microseconds let's say this FET is on but this part here guarantees you an even better conductivity of the FET so it, it, it increases uh, that lifespan and it increases of course the um, on speed because the voltage rises quicker which I was this is a thing that I was saying before and so you get a, uh, an improvement also on the fully on time which is always good for FETs so let's see if we have some other uh, examples here uh, this is 10 microseconds so it looks steeper because of course the timing is different and uh, this is again 10 microseconds as you can see very pronounced and yes okay let's see if I can find these are the two comparisons and it's very you know very obvious the increase in uh, in performance and in the voltage here so that's definitely a, uh, a suggested mod uh, there is something else that I did which is I don't know if you can see it here uh, I disabled the buzzer uh, because it was very very um, disturbing and to do that you can cut a trace on the opposite side of the PCB if you want which is this trace here and eventually you can solder it bridge it back if you want you can also uh, put a little uh, if you want to like uh, glue a little um, uh, jumper uh, on the side here with two wires so you can enable and disable the buzzer because it's really pretty loud of course you can I don't suggest disabling it permanently because it does give you you know hints on what's happening but you can see it from the display if it's off it's in standby and if it's um, on it's working you just don't hear the contact beep but you can feel it so okay uh, potentially you could put a um, like a limiting resistor on the buzzer so that it's not so loud but that's messier because it's on the other side it's easier just to cut this trace and simply disable it and if you need just re-enable it so that's that's something that I did but it's just to avoid going crazy with these beeps um, what else uh, okay the circuit I showed you um, well, that's basically it and once you've done this um, this mod here are the FETs that they're used they're always in Finion but these are slightly um, I think better performance but the range is there 0.8 milliohms maximum and 0.6 milliohms are internal resistance and if you can see uh, in the PDF um, there is a continuous drain a curve here characteristics curve um, based on the um, voltage and um, you can see that the 100 amps with a voltage range source of 10 volts and uh, gate to source voltage here it's important that you uh, reach the 3.5 volt limit or better the 4 to be like fully on you see and um, avoid staying under and these peaks can be several hundred amps in the beginning so this is important to uh, keep it up and uh, fully saturated um, here you have uh, the various uh, resistances with the uh, gate source as you can see uh, already at 3.5 volts you have a pretty high uh, internal resistance uh, and instead this is milliohms is so around 1.2 uh, let's see if I can show you like zooming in oops zoom in okay and if you are simply going reaching 6 volts it's already below you see okay, there's an enormous gap between of course 3.5 and 4.5 volts so it's important to stay above 4.5 uh, 6 volts is okay and then the uh, higher voltage you get like 10 volts you really get the minimum here it's like 0. Uh, I think 0. 0.5 
something like that so it's always best and you can see the drain current is 150 amps so this is this is a, a good area uh, 6 volts is still safe but if your battery dips for some whatever reason something you know an element is a little bit uh, above um, par it has a slightly higher internal resistance it's not fully charged or whatever it's getting old you can risk that uh, that problem there and if that uh, as these gates are all connected together and not individually uh, driven yeah you, one of them will fail before the other so this it's important to keep that that gate voltage nice and nice and pulsed and high and it also increases the on time because this of course is when it's on but you need to reach this voltage and the quicker um, you reach it the better it is and if you have a higher and uh, pulsed let's say um, uh, gate voltage it's faster and it's better um, okay junction two cases are well these are all the uh, the effects that are allowed and uh, the limits and how the FET uh, performs in uh, in specs <clears throat> of course when it's getting hot uh, the um, internal the threshold voltage it, it changes because of course uh, the temperature uh, influences uh, the field effect uh, okay well just staying out of the let's not get into technical here are some examples unclamped switching uh, this is what we're doing here but we are just pulsing one pulse uh, and this is a test circuit to see this is exactly where I uh, take the the signal from for the um, uh, scope shots and here is our uh, Miller effect here you have it. The green source. This is the plateau Miller plateau or Miller effect or whatever, and this is the charging of the uh, let's say the caps, the, the capacitance that the uh, junctions have inside of the uh, field effect transistor. Okay, well, that's 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 basically it. So um, if you want to decouple it, just do these uh, simple steps add this scraping up a little bit of uh, interrupting this and uh, scraping the um, uh, scraping some copper you know some um, uh, solder mask off and exposing the copper and there you have it you just need to find a, a 10 or 20 ohm or even 30 ohm uh, a quarter quarter or eighth watt diode um, sorry resistor and then um, here I use the 1N40, 148. You can use a 4, 1N4002, uh, oh, oh, uh, 3, or 4. I mean, these are high voltage. Uh, you know, 401. We have 16 volts here, so 4002, oh, oh, uh, I think, is is more than enough. And it's 1 amp, so it's fine. Um, whatever you have, which is above the, you know, these uh, 20 volts, let's say, if any 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 average diode is above that, and um, that's all you need. So uh, this was a quick, uh, let's say, um, uh, reference to this uh, purple, to this purple um, uh, model. Uh, I hope you, uh, let's say, enjoyed the short uh, version just to um, modify it if you ever uh, lay your hands on one of these, uh, which are again pretty cheap and uh, of course need the usual mod to prevent any any bad uh, results here and oh yes and I reflowed the gate uh, the um, uh, gate pins and the drain and source uh, as you can see from these shots here um, okay well just just for safety because they they are a little uh, short on, on solder so better uh, reflow them just to you know have a good have a good contact uh, on all the five pins here and be sure that all the gate pins are well well soldered uh, you don't need to reflow this bar here uh, it's just the pads that I did okay so that was it and uh, if you have any uh, questions or if anything is not clear just drop a comment below and uh, Feel free to subscribe if you want to uh, for any future updates. Thank you.